Hey, it's ALP, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to book your own music gigs. So let's go. Before we get started, a little bit about me. My name is Amanda Lee Pierce. I've been a performing musician for over 10 years. I've released a full length album with a former band of mine, the Driftwood Sailors, and two solo EPs, as well as being on NBC's The Voice and booking all my own shows and tours the course of my entire music career. So these are all tips that I've learned over the years and will hopefully help you book some gigs. Now, before you even start thinking about booking a gig, there is one thing that you need, and I don't care what anyone says about this. I 100% believe every musician should have their own website. In order to be an independent musician, artist, you really have to think of yourself as a business and every business needs a website. Musicians are no different. Now don't get overwhelmed if you don't know how to design a website. When I first started out, I used something called Banzoogle, which is a website builder specifically for musicians. I'm not getting paid to say this. I just wanna help you guys out. This is a really great way to start a website when you don't really know how to build a website. So what do you need on a music website? Well, you're definitely gonna need an about section and it doesn't have to be long. Just make sure you include any cool facts that would maybe differentiate you from other artists. And I know artists don't like to compare ourselves to other people or bands, but it is really helpful when you're trying to book gigs you know, nobody knows you yet. So if you compare yourself or your sound to another well-known artist, it's gonna help the venue kind of understand what your style is. You're also gonna want a video section and I highly recommend setting up a YouTube channel and posting videos of you performing covers and original music. The other section you're gonna want on your website is a press photo section. Now, for your press photos, these are gonna be very professional looking photos that uh, the venue or even radio stations, new newspapers, anyone that wants to advertise you or your band, they're gonna use these photos to promote you. So you wanna make sure you actually like these photos and that they are professional looking. It's also really helpful to have your photos in both landscape and portrait. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to have a contact section so that venues can contact you. And don't forget to put your links to your social media pages on your website. All right, once you have your website, you're gonna to wanna to think about what type of venue you wanna book a gig at. And there's three different types of venues. There's your traditional music venue, a non-traditional music venue, and festivals. A traditional music venue is your music halls, you know, your music clubs, anything that centers around live music. The pros of playing a traditional music venue include possibly playing for a very large crowd, they provide all the sound equipment, and usually you don't have to play for a very long time. It's usually less than an hour. Now the cons of playing a traditional music venue is that it is usually a little difficult to book these types of gigs when you're just starting out. If you do happen to book a gig like this when you're not very established, the venue's probably gonna ask you to pay to play. And that's usually in the form of selling tickets ahead of time to guarantee that you're gonna bring a certain amount of people in. These types of gigs do rely heavily on advertising. So you really need to put a lot of time and effort and sometimes money into advertising gigs at a traditional music venue. The next type of venue I wanna talk about is a non-traditional music venue. And these venues are usually bars, restaurants, breweries, cideries, wineries, anything that doesn't build a business model around live music. The pros of playing a non-traditional music venue is that they already usually have a built-in crowd. They almost always pay a set amount of money and you can usually get a free meal or some drinks out of it as well. Now the cons of playing a non-traditional music venue is that 
most of the time they don't provide sound equipment so you're gonna have to provide that yourself or find a venue that does you're also gonna have to play for at least two or three hours sometimes more depending on the venue and although they do usually pay a set amount of money they might not have a very large budget for music so the pay might not be as great and advertising is still necessary. The whole point of a non-traditional venue bringing you in is that they want you to bring more customers for them. So if you're not advertising and bringing people in, it's just not gonna look great on you and you're probably not gonna get booked again. Now the last type of venue I wanna talk about is a festival. And this can be any type of festival. It doesn't have to just be limited to music festivals. Now the pro of playing a festival is that you're usually going to get to play for a very large crowd. And the crowd is already there for the festival, so it's a built-in crowd. Depending on the type of festival, they're going to have a budget for live music, so you will get paid a set amount of money. Another plus is that you get free entrance to the festival. They almost always provide sound equipment and set times for a music festival, especially if you're opening for another band is usually pretty short, about 45 minutes or less. Now the cons of booking a gig at a music festival is that they can be a little difficult to book, especially if you're not well established. Once you've figured out what type of venues you want to try to book a gig at, start making a list. Once you have your list, you can just start emailing the venues and if it's a little unclear on who to email, you can just give them a call and ask the best contact person to email for booking gigs. There's always one question in particular that you really need to be prepared to answer when booking gigs. And that is, what is your rate or how much do you charge? I never recommend getting into pay to play situation or playing for free. That's just a no, no when it comes to booking gigs, never play for free. Unless of course you are presented with a amazing opportunity like getting to work with like a very well-known artist or producer, getting yourself on TV, or even playing at a giant music festival. Even then, I still always recommend trying to get, even if it's 50 bucks, like just don't play for free. The next question you're gonna wanna be prepared to answer, again, if you're playing non-traditional music venues is, do you provide sound equipment? I highly recommend buying your own sound equipment. This is gonna give you way more options when you're trying to book gigs. You might even get to play a venue that's never had live music before, but because you're providing the equipment, you're making it as easy as possible for the venue, you might just get a gig there. Another question you're gonna get asked a lot is, how long can you play for? Personally, I never play more than three hours, but that's a personal preference. And in my opinion, anything longer than three hours just kind of becomes background music. And you do want people to pay attention at your gigs as much as possible. Now, sometimes a venue will ask you to guarantee or ask you how many people you're gonna bring in. And I get it, of course they wanna know, are they gonna be getting a return on what they're gonna pay you? For me, I never give a set guarantee on how many people I'm gonna bring in you have to advertise and that's really all you can do. You can't control how many people end up showing up on the day of the gig. That's really kind of getting yourself into a situation where you're paying to play. Even though you might not be selling tickets, the venue wants you to guarantee them a certain amount of people. And I just don't operate that way. But again, I understand the venue wants to make sure that you're gonna bring in a certain amount of people so that they can recoup what they're paying you. Okay, so you contacted the venue and they said, yes, congratulations on booking your first gig. So now what? Well, before anything, my recommendation is to send the venue a contract. I've gotten into many situations before where I've played a gig and they don't send me a track for months. Or I have booked a gig and they canceled me on the last minute. Now, not only Am I losing money? But I could have booked another gig in place of that one. So in my opinion, it's always important to have the venue sign a music contract. And it's also gonna make you look a lot more professional. Any professional business is gonna have no problem signing a simple contract stating 
the date, the time, how much you're gonna get paid, and that you're going to get paid the day of the show. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is advertise the crap out of your show. You always wanna make a good first impression and the more people you can bring in, the better, not only for you, but for the venue. Practice, practice, practice. You wanna make sure you are fully prepared for a gig, especially if you're just starting out and you haven't played many before. You want the gig to go as great as possible and you want that venue to ask you to come back to play another game. All right, so it's the day of your show. You're gonna wanna have a mailing list, sign up sheets, and this is just to start collecting email addresses so that in the future, you can send emails out to all your fans, telling them about upcoming shows, new music, or any merch you plan on selling online. You're also gonna wanna have someone taking pictures and videos at your gig so you can throw them up online on social media and just keep the buzz going about your band or you as an artist. All right, so what do you do once your gig is over? Well, it's always great to not only thank your fans for coming out, but thanking the venue for having you and sending a follow-up email, once again, thanking them. And if you enjoyed your time and it was a great gig, asking them if you can book another gig in the future. Now, don't get discouraged if you don't hear back from all the venues that you've emailed. I never hear back from all the venues that I email and of the ones who do respond, only a handful of those actually get booked. So just keep reaching out, keep following up, and I guarantee you're gonna book some gigs. All right, so that about sums it up on how you can book your own gigs. I hope this is helpful to you. And if you have any tips, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.